from even when I first joined H2K, everyone had like the same kind of idea of what we want to do. And I think Hyunan plays a big role in this because he is a very vocal AD carry. And I didn't expect it like at the beginning because AD carries usually don't talk that much. It's mainly like the jungler that talks a lot because he's the one moving around the map. But Hyunan kind of showed me a new way of like how AD carries can play and stuff. And ever since then, I've always trusted him. Welcome back, everyone. We're about to take a look at the next set of teams to do battle on our stage, and that's going to be H2K and Elements. We're going to start by taking a look at the lineup for H2K on the blue side for this one with Odawamne, Lulex, Ryu, Yarnan, Kasing, and Prali. And just hearing from Kasing there and Isabel's relationship in the bottom lane with Yarnan. They bounced back yesterday uh, in their game after, well, if you guys don't remember, their game versus OG was particularly rough at the end of last week, but yesterday bringing back, going back to the basics as we called it in that early game for them. Certainly did go back to the basics. That was uh, my big criticism of them coming out of the game with Origin. They let Dragons go yesterday. No, not the same story at all. Uh, H2K looked like the H2K from Spring again, but it, it raises a question that, it, that if they can get knocked off that, uh, how quickly do they recover as a team in-game is a really big question because they got so used to playing from ahead, playing from behind like we just saw the Unicorns do. If you don't do it a lot, it gets kind of difficult. And I also think part of the reason that H2K didn't get a chance to play their style in Week 1 is because some of the teams in the Summer Split are now stronger than what we saw from the Spring Split. Origin being a prime example of one of those teams sitting at the top of the table. Now, a big reason they were able to pick up the win yesterday was, of course, Odo Omni on Rumble. He got ahead early. He got some ganks from Lulex that he ended up using to just really roll and steamroll ahead. And I was particularly impressed because Odo Wamne to me is still primarily a tank player, is still primarily a guy that you, you think of as an initiating force, not necessarily as a carrying force, despite the debates that he and Stress have had on this very desk. <laughs> so I'm happy to see that Odo Wamne also got a chance to shine and delivered. Yeah, that was actually going to be my point, was that he's playing different styles of champions. And uh, one thing that I've known Odo Wamne as a player over a long time is that he is one that will start to innovate a little bit more when it comes to his champion pools, I would expect him to have been playing a lot of Rise. So that is going to be a key pick here as we go into this game. Yeah, I don't think that's giving anything away. I think all of the top laners know uh, how strong Rise particularly is. Yeah, and just talking about the game really quickly, yesterday Gambit went really weird and wonky with that yeah. team composition. Yeah. HCK handled in the stride. They went, we've got the better picks, we've got the better bands, we play our comp better. And that's something that I think is, is a testament to just how cool-headed these guys actually are on the Rift. Yeah, and let's see who is on the other side for this one. Elements on the red side with JWoww, Dexter, Frog and Tabs, Promise Q, their new support, and their coach Niff, uh, 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 obviously their former support. Well, Elements, I'm just going to sigh a little bit because disappointing showing yesterday versus Giants. But we got to say, even today again, Giants is proving to be a solid middle of the table team if they keep this up. So that puts it in a different perspective, but still Elements not showing up. Look, you, you, Elements was the number seven team from the spring split, right? This is a bottom half of the table squad. Yes, they've changed four players, but there was nowhere near the same level of expectation on these guys coming in. People are like, well, it's got to be better, right? It's, yeah. hard to, it's hard to do much worse. Giants have shown that they have grown, they've adapted their playstyle, they've adapted their picks and bans. Elements has not. They are still passive, they are still slow, they're still playing for the late game. That doesn't work. It didn't work last year, it didn't work in spring, and it's not working in summer. So something drastic has to change. Yeah, and if we look back at when it did work for them, their, uh, I believe it was their very first game that was very convincing. Dexter was all over the place and flying. Yesterday, also in the top lane, JWoww, they said in the beginning, JWoww, now he has a good team around him and it's going to be up to them to show what he can do, but he needs to get some support as well. He does. It seems like perhaps Dexter still maybe a little part of him stuck in that North American don't help top lane mentality that some of the North American teams suffer from. But JRO is a top laner that demands attention from the enemy jungler. And if you're not there yourself to counter gank, JRO is going to be in trouble again and again. And, and it's something that elements just have not played on. And they haven't let JWoww stretch his legs properly yet. Yeah, and if you actually you know, take another step back from the jungler discussion, how Dexter was super impactful in the, the win that Elements picked up, and then you look at how uh, junglers have to focus on JWoww, Froggen still pretty much says, I need you in my lane. Like, I need you to gank for me. Froggen is pulling a lot of resources, is pulling a lot of attention. And yesterday, he actually gave up the most deaths that he's ever given up in an LCS game, and it was against Pepe Nero. Now, that is a shocking statement to make because, yes, the matchup favored Pepe, the Diana into the victor. But you sort of start to go, well, if, if players of a higher caliber, in theory, can pick matchups that are not as favorable, they should be able to come out even. 
It didn't happen. Pepe went 1v1 and killed Froggen. Yeah, and Froggen died eight times, which is the most he's ever died in a game. The last record was five times versus Copenhagen Wolves in spring, but they ended up winning that game. So that's also a mental issue there. What I always see on the camps, though, from Alliance, from Elements now as well, they are always very happy going into a game. And maybe there must be something there as well as Froggen realizing, okay, these are still four new guys with me. But how much slack do you give a lineup with that is the question. It's impossible to say. <laughs> yeah. Because when you look at a team's results, Froggen has been trying to build a team to get to Worlds. Yeah. Uh, the team in the spring split obviously wasn't good enough. The, spring, the team so far in the summer, not yet good enough. Not yet being the key. I think there's still time. But by week four, week five, unless something has turned around very quickly, that's when you start going, there's too much slack and something different needs to change. Yeah. We'll see if they can turn it around here versus H2K. The teams are making their final preparations on stage, so we're going to get head over to the desk and get into that game. Thanks very much, Shox. Crepo and I are taking over the caster desk as H2K and Elements load up for their first clash of the split. But Crepo, Elements, a little bit of a rough start for them, yeah? Yeah, they seem to be very shattered by the loss of their former support. Mm -hmm. No, I, all, all joking aside, uh, they didn't look that well. And they made some mistakes, and you think they fix it, but it keeps going back to the wrong things, I feel. Jungle priority from Dexter is something that definitely we'll have to work on. Froggen looked a little shaky.